Hello everyone, my name is Palms to my Yoi, and we're back for Pokemon Y Shiny Hunting Episode 228, Lapras. If you didn't watch the last episode, why didn't you? And this episode's topic is by me. It is a life tip, so just gonna say it right here now. Be responsible. And there's many ways to be responsible. Um, if you're not already a very responsible person, got responsibilities and all that. Um, but mainly just to be responsible is to make sure to always put uh, put I put your responsibilities first and um, that can either mean taking out the trash or the recycle each certain day whatever you um, whenever is time like you've got to do it pretty early like me you gotta wait until at least a decent amount of uh, of light coming in the house so no one will get um, alarmed that the door front door just opens in the middle of the night make make you kind of feel like someone's trying to break in the house so for me personally I wait until it's a good amount of light and uh, personally now that I have these videos to do back again um, it's pretty much whenever I get uh, these all done and uploading I'll most likely check to see if it's all good to go and uh, most, most of the time it is, so, yeah, so anyway, um, just be responsible, it's, uh, it's really not really good to be lazy, and especially if it's to help someone out, and, uh, like, if you make a promise to someone, or if you just, uh, just are during your, your job or your work, just, that's your responsibility, and you should just make sure to stay on top of it, do the best you can do, don't try to look for more time to get free time just you know do your responsibilities and do it um, full through all the way and uh, be consistent with it so uh, yeah it's really the main just the main topic I know it wasn't super long of a topic but I just want to make sure you all knew why uh, one of these life tips is because even if it's as simple as that it's always good to know and I would be the be very glad if I was the first to teach you, but even if I'm not, just hopefully you learned it in general, either uh, way earlier than how you're hearing it now, or just eventually, hopefully, because, yeah. So, yeah, so, um, before I get into, um, continuing, because I wanted to talk about way more of the good memories from the Mar and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story game, but before I get into that, I just wanted to finish talking about the whole um, Pokemon Soul Silver thing. So I wanted to talk about the how I'm going to uh, make sure that Weeping Bell gets that Leaf Blade because if you didn't know, in fourth generation, at least in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, at level 47. Uh, even if you have Weeping Bell already at level 47, if you evolve Weeping Bell with the Moving Stone on that level, it will give you the option to learn Leaf Blade, and I think also Leaf Storm, but Leaf Blade's personally a better option if you don't have that many uh, free slots on your move set. It's a better option because, yeah, Leaf Storm is more powerful, but um, it lowers your special attack harshly, so if you have mostly special attacks in your uh on your Weeping Bell and or newly evolved Victory Bell, then it's just not that great because it lowers your attack unless you switch out, and it can be a real bad choice. So, pretty much with me, uh, currently, I've got Cut and Flash on my Weeping Bell just for easy HM use, but also, I plan on just keeping the move Acid, because I know you could have um, Knock Off and Ring Out, but honestly, I in knockout in that game, not knockout, knockoff, knockoff in that game is only 20 power. It is pretty crap. And if I if there was no other, not that great other choices, and I had more space, I probably would keep knockoff because it's still a dark type attack, and uh, it's a bit and its effect is very helpful. But in the sense, I only have two moves to pretty much uh, learn. I'm just gonna stick with acid, like I said, because. Acid is a stab move on Weeping Bell, 
and Victory Bell, and um, it's it is good, especially if you have that Poison Barb to help out through the game. And um, the we the reason I'm going with Leaf Blade is because is because because <laughs> is because of the um, is because of the just the sheer power of uh, Leaf Blade, how it's such a strong grass type move, and if you don't evolve uh, Weeping Bell, or if you eventually do, but you already passed that level to where you can't really get it back easily, then it just makes it very difficult, because some games, uh, maybe it might get uh, very difficult to get a heart scale, or there's just not a move relearner in general. So, um... Or with some movie learners in the games, they don't only take heart scale. Like some of them, like the uh, the fire red and leaf green, you would have to go to a move maniac. I'm pretty sure, and you would need to give the move maniac some mushrooms, like little tiny mushrooms or big mushrooms. So, but anyway, yeah. So, pretty much, um, I will hopefully keep monitoring what my weep amount of level is at. And if I have to, like I said, once it reaches level 47, I will immediately put it into the box until I get a Leaf Stone. No matter, even if this is going to make the game harder for me, or, um, or just, it's going to be annoying to train it when I train my Pokemon to level 100. If I do, of course, uh, have this game known uh, to me, guaranteed to play over and over again, but to uh, first and foremost make sure to shiny hunt as much as I can in it uh, during the episodes or just streaming or stuff like that. So yeah, so if that happens then of course then I would just like I said make sure to wait until I can guarantee get that leaf stone. And like I said the only ways currently in that game are just for me personally is to either get really lucky and win the bug casting contest and also you win a leaf stone or um, you get that call from Gina and she just randomly gives you a leaf stone so yeah so that's pretty much what's up with that so if you wanted to know what I was gonna do when it gets to that point and I still don't have a leaf stone there's your answer so anyway so I think that's pretty much about it that I wanted to talk about with that. So I guess I'll go go on to the um, to the oh the the nice guy shiny hunter thing. So for some reason I just was like uh, I was finally realizing that yeah it seems like the third slot in uh, Friend Safari is it has to be the rarest because you have to actually beat the Elite Four and save your game at least once to be able to have um, uh, that unlocked for other people when they hunt your Friend Safari. I'm pretty sure that has to be it because if you don't then you can't access those two because I have a friend currently um, one I made, I think, a few days ago, not yesterday, I know it was like at least two days ago, somewhere around there, but he has only two unlocked, and if he had the third, then it would be showing three question marks on those boxes if you haven't, like, encountered anything in, in that Friend Safari, so that has to be, that's like, that would be my logic to, that has to be the rarest encounter in the Friend Safari, the one on the far right, the third one the third slot so yeah I make sure to check each day um, when that does have a new slot because um, just to make sure it gets that registered as what that Pokemon will be in there but um, yeah so pretty much that is one of the things I want to talk about but I was also really surprised that I didn't get a shiny yesterday um, just either by from the friend safari or just random full odds um, but I'm really surprised because I was just really expecting to even if I got another shiny Excadrill or shiny Fortress of course I'm really hoping for that shiny Pharisee so I can uh, finally move on to the next the next friend safari so I can complete more complete those but 
like I said, still got Pharaoh Seed to go, and um, it's so funny because even though Excadrill is the rarest, at times it seems like Pharaoh Seed is the rarest. So it's just weird. So I don't know, maybe the logic where what could be the rare encounter could be what kind of Pokemon it is, and um, just, yeah. But I don't know, maybe that's just me, maybe it's my luck, because like I said, my luck is very weird. And, uh, yeah. So I wanted to talk more about the last episode's topic because I just cut myself off because, like I said, it was the end of the episode pretty much. I didn't want to go on any further because I didn't want a chance to just drag this out even longer because, like I said, I want to keep these episodes uh, 14 minutes, like me stopping the main thing, and then of course you got the outro, which takes about 30 seconds. But, um... Yeah, so anyway, I want to talk about the more good memories for Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story. So, if you don't, like I said, don't care about the game or don't care to hear about it all that much, then you can just mute the episode because it's going to most likely take up the rest of the episode. So, yeah. So, anyway, I'm going to continue to talk about it now. So, yeah. So, the, another good memory is, um, I just tried to go in order with this in the last episode, but... I'm trying to think what are the other good ones. Oh, okay. So, when the first time when you're able to go um super uh I guess how do I explain? Mega Bowser or huge Bowser? Because um in the first Mario game uh that this is introduced and I'm pretty sure uh New Super Mario Bros for the DS I'm pretty sure that's the first time you see the uh, Mega Mushroom, the big, huge, orange mushroom with uh, red spots, and uh, that makes you into Giant Mario, which is very easy to clear out levels that you get that in. And um, but anyway, this one um, Bowser gets his own giant size, and you actually, of course, get to use him and. It is really awesome those giant battles, but the first giant battle that you have throughout the game is after you um, you are in the uh, Wiggler Forest and you are battling um, first got got to go through the forest and all that to beat the Wiggler and then after he gives you the bonsai bill for the cannon because that's the whole side quest thing if you haven't played the game another spoiler alert sorry but this memory a uh, good memory just has uh, me wanting to be able to talk about that so so anyway um, when you finally do load it up and try to shoot it at Bowser's castle because you're probably thinking why the heck well if you haven't played it then you wouldn't know but or if you haven't just watched the uh, like a let's play of it or a walkthrough then um, pretty much you want you're, you're trying to get your castle back because Fawful has taken over lots of things but also mainly Bowser's castle um, uh, mind yeah mind controlled most of Bowser's minions and, um, yeah, so he's trying to just land an attack on his own castle because he knows Fawful, uh, one of Fawful's, um, either minions or Fawful himself is in that castle, so he's just trying to launch an attack against him, but it's funny because he, they add, like, an installment to where the castle has, like, rocket functions, anyways, this will be the last one, we'll check for the episode. And uh, it flies over the bonsai bill, and it pretty much goes over Bowser and crushes him. And then you do like a mini game to get him boosted up, and that's where the big first uh, mega Bowser, mega big Bowser fight first starts in the game. So anyway, that's that's it for that. So anyway, if you enjoyed the episode, if you'd be so kind to uh, support me by donating to my Patreon. Uh, as long as you're not putting yourself in a bad spot to do so, of course, but, um, feel free to, anyway. The link is in the description down below, but I'll be seeing y'all later. I have been your host, Paul Samayori, and goodbye.